Well, hello once again to everyone. Greetings to, first of all, members of our Pilgrim Church family, but also greetings to any visitor who has tuned in as well for this uh, weekly video. This is Danny here on behalf of all of the elders with our weekly opportunity for reflection and discernment or the word. This is scheduled for Wednesday, November 15th, 2023. Today's edition of our current series of devotional videos, which is based upon a study guide for the entire Bible, entitled Blue Bible Blueprints, is session number 10. It will be the final study of the 39 books of the Old Testament. The source material for this series is a digital online study guide designed to serve as a quick personal reference source. Each of the 66 books of the Bible is presented in a one-page outline format. The entire file, data file, is available at this website. Now, anyone could go to this site, purchase access to an embedded link, and that link will allow you to download the file to your personal computer. Then you're free to print any or all of the outlines at your leisure. Even though this book out, even though each book's outline is contained with on, within only one page of material, there is still a lot of information that is presented within each one of them. Now, I purchased these outlines a few months ago with plans to add them to my own personal resource collection. And after I view, reviewed them a bit, I thought that they would uh, make a good topic for a video series. And so here we are. So with some mathematical calculations, I decided that the best way to adequately cover all 66 books of the Bible without expending an enormously long period of time doing so would be to cover four outlines each week for a total expenditure of 17 weeks. So you can see we're on the back half of our 17 weeks with this being our 10th week of study. And as we wind up our study of the Old Testament today, it seems that this schedule has, uh, to me at least, certainly been both adequately detailed and manageable for each week's study. Now, uh, once again, due to copyright restrictions, I will not be able to display any of the outline pages on camera, but I did contact the company and got permission from them to use these uh, pages of material uh, as an uh, audio, as a basis for the audio format here in presenting our lessons each week. Now, I would strongly suggest that you make written notes of any material that interests you as we proceed through this lesson, because there will be quite a bit, uh, quite a substantial amount presented in a short stretch of time. Or you may even choose to purchase your own copy, and then you can follow along each week, either by reading the documents on your computer screen, as I've been doing for each week's lesson, or you can print them out and use them as reference, as a hard copy reference as, go, as we go through the lesson and, of course, for reference later on. Now, we have previously reviewed the one-page study outlines of the Old Testament books of Genesis, which began our very first lesson, through Zephaniah, the last of the four books we looked at in our most recent study. This week, we continue our journey by looking at the final Old Testament books, and there are only three left, by the way, of Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. So let's get right, right into our uh, outlines. First we have Haggai. This is the 37th book in the Old Testament. It has two chapters and is, is continues the minor prophecy theme that we've been on for a few weeks. It was written in 526 BC, covering the time period of 526 BC, with Haggai the prophet himself being the author. As an overview, Haggai is one of the few books written after the return from the great exile in Babylon. He wrote to encourage the people of Judah to rebuild the temple. He wanted them to stop focusing on their own misfortune and to remember that devotion to God brings true rewards. Haggai is divided in this study into two different segments. The first segment is uh, entitled, Haggai Encourages the People to Rebuild the Temple. This covers the first chapter of Haggai. Here we see Haggai tells the people they have procrast 
procrastinated rebuilding the temple, which is why they are not flourishing personally and as a nation. The people are fixated instead on rebuilding their own houses, and as a result, they are forgotten about unity, about love for God, and about each other. As a result of Haggai's preaching, the people heed the call to rebuild the temple. The second segment is entitled, Three More Prophecies from the Prophet Haggai. He shares these three prophecies. First, God will, quote, shake up the earth and restore peace, end quote. As a second prophecy, God will bless his people even though they have defiled, they have been defiled by unclean people and customs. And then thirdly, God will use Zerubbabel as his chosen leader. Moving on to our second book, we find Zechariah, the 38th book in the Old Testament with 14 chapters. And again, it is a minor prophecy book written in 520 to 484 B.C., with a time period covering from 520 B.C. until end of days, as you will see, there are prophecies involving that. And again, the author is the prophet himself, Zechariah. Our overview tells us that Zechariah prophesied after the return of the great exile, as did Haggai. The scope of his prophecies covers a wide range of topics and timelines because he often speaks of Old Testament events and the first and second coming of Christ in the very same passage. There is a full decade, a lull of decades between the two sets of prophecies. As you can probably guess, there are two segments in the book of Zechariah. The first, entitled Zechariah's Early Prophecies, covers the first eight chapters of the book. Here, Zechariah's ministry begins with calling on Judah to repent. He then receives eight metaphoric visions in one night, from horns to horses and flying scrolls. He warns the people to repent and to prepare for the Messiah. Then the second segment covers Zechariah's later prophecies. This is the ninth through the fourteenth chapters of the book. Here Zechariah sees the coming of the Lord. He sees that the Messiah will be rejected by the Jews and specifically mentions Palm Sunday. He sees the second coming of the Lord and the final victory for Israel with the Messiah. And then our final book review for today is the book of Malachi. It is the 39th and last book in the Old Testament. consists of four chapters. It, was it is a minor prophecy once again. It was written around 433 to 424 B.C., the time period covered is from 424 B.C. until 24 A.D., and Malachi the prophet is again the author of the book, which carries his name. In our overview, the people of Judah had been living in Jerusalem for more than 100 years after the Babylonian exile concluded. Although the temple had been rebuilt, as Haggai had called for, there was corruption in the priesthood, and the people had become spiritually disinterested. Through the prophet Malachi, God calls the priests and the people to repentance. This book, Malachi, is divided into three segments. Segment one, titled The Sin of Bad Sacrifice, covers the first chapter. Malachi reprimands the people for offering blind and lame animals to God, which was specifically contrary to the law given by Moses. Our second segment, covers the sins of breaking covenants with others. This is uh, the second and third chapter of Malachi. Here Malachi rebukes the priest for being a poor example to the people and for not letting the law of the not keeping the law of the Lord. Other sins he reprimands include disrespecting wives, sorcery, lying, and cheating your employees. And then the third and final segment of our final book in the Old Testament, covers a final judgment and a promise from God through the prophet. This is the fourth book of, excuse me, the fourth chapter of the book. Here Malachi tells of the consequences that will fall on evil and good people at the end of days. He reminds the people to not forget Moses and their history, and then he promises the return of Elijah, metaphorically. Well, a little much briefer 
review today than normally since we have uh, one fewer book to cover. Now, whether you have viewed all of the previous nine videos and this one on this topic, or a few of them here and there, or that this is your very first exposure to our study, wherever you may fall within that range, it's my hope that these outline studies of the Old Testament book so far that we just completed will produce with you within you a trio of results. First, I hope that they develop uh, you develop an appreciation of the value and the depth of scripture information contained within each book of the Bible, even the ones that have much less, much less textual content. Secondly, I hope that uh, these videos will instill within you a hunger to go beyond just this summary material presented for each book and lead you to do more in-depth study on your own and in your own time. And thirdly, I hope that you recognize that there are some concepts and principles and truths that thread their way throughout God's Word from beginning to end, and therefore should be a primary focus of study and application as we daily walk with God. I hope that you'll continue viewing each week's successive video as this series progresses next into a study of the New Testament books. I also hope that you will consider the time involved in viewing our videos as being time well spent. As always, each posted video will be archived on our church family's website and thus will be available for viewing whenever you might wish to do so and as often as you might desire. This can be an especially good way to reach back and view any previous installments should you have missed any along the way. Simply check out either the Pigram Tennessee Church of Christ page on Facebook or the Pigram Church Media site on YouTube. And if you should find this information from these videos beneficial to you in your personal spiritual walk, by all means, feel free to mention them and, and point your family or friends uh, to these sites if they might have an interest in the study as well. So I will ask you to please come back next week when we continue our study by shifting our focus to the first four New Testament books, the Gospel accounts of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, between now and then, allow me to urge you to make time for a couple of activities to be done every day. First, spend some quality time alone in prayer to God Thank him for your blessings, all of your blessings. Tell him of your needs. Confess to him your sins and ask for his forgiveness and entreat him on behalf of others who are in need. Secondly, spend some time alone in the study of your Bible. Let God speak to you through his holy and inspired living word as you read from it daily on a daily basis. Now, if you are not currently attending Bible study, worship services, or midweek activities somewhere else, and you live in the Pigram area, then please accept my invitation to visit us at the Church of Christ in Pigram. If you should do so, I can assure you a warm welcome along with an opportunity to get to know and to grow spiritually alongside a loving body of baptized believers in God, in His Son, and in His Spirit. Wherever you might worship regularly, I pray that God will shower his blessings upon you and upon your family each day. Now, I'll close this study with a passage of scripture from each book that we are reviewed today. My New King James Version Bible has an introductory commentary for each book, and within that introduction, introductory commentary, there contains a key verse from the book in question. And so I'll be using those selected passages for a few of our closing passages here, and a couple, uh, one at least one other will be uh, just a favorite of mine. Now, in these three passages, one of them addresses a sad situation for the people of God. One passage addresses a uh, promised event that strikes joy in the hearts of the people of God, and then the third one addresses a sad situation that can easily be transformed into a glorious one for the people of God. So here they are, first from the book of Haggai. In the first chapter, verses 6 and 7, 
This is how it reads from the International Children's Bible. God speaking to his people. You have planted much, but you harvest little. You eat, but you do not become full. You drink, but you are still thirsty. You put on clothes, but you are not warm enough. You earn money and then lose it all. It is as if you put it into a purse full of holes. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies says. Think about what you have done. And now turning to Zechariah, we turn to the ninth chapter and the ninth verse, according to the Living Bible. Rejoice, O oh, rejoice greatly, O oh my people, shout with joy, for look, your king is coming. He is the righteous one, the victor, yet he is lowly riding on a donkey's coat. A little prophecy there about uh, our Savior Jesus. And then finally, from Malachi, chapter 3, verses 8 and 10 from the New International Version. This has for some time been a favorite passage of mine and a challenging passage to me, and I hope that you'll uh, see the challenge that's included within it. God speaking where he says, Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how are we robbing you? In tithes and in offerings. You are under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Wow. So, until our next study, when we pick up our review uh, as it applies to the New Testament, please remember I love each one of you and pray that you will take care. Goodbye.